مشكلة ولا يعني هو أعيد من الشروع في سنة ربي تكاري الحمد لله أزم الشيخ Here we define what's the meaning, what they mean by Sharia, and what they, what they mean by Hakika. Then he said, the Sharia, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala designated it to you for your benefit. That you are going to ask certain matters, certain beneficial action for you from Sharia by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to your benefit. Ask by Sharia, namely like dua, like prayer, or like when pay zakah, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa taala by Sharia uh, or from Sharia by Him, by who, by Him subhanahu wa taala, because He is the one who is supporting you, as we said, wa iya kanastain for your benefit. Whereas al haqiqa was designated for Him subhanahu wa taala for sure. Yani this, they are both of them. They are your actions, and you are the most one, or you are the only one to get benefit of them. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not going to get benefit when we say "haqiqa belongs to him" or "this for him" or "designated for him." This doesn't mean that he's going to get benefit from him from it. Subhanahu wa Taala. No, it would rather be related to him and uh, be completely and sincerely attached to him subhanahu wa ta'ala wal haqiqatu lahu hatta tatlubaha bihi lahu azza wa jal and you are going to ask for it by him subhanahu wa ta'ala for him subhanahu wa ta'ala okay haithu la hina wa la ayin whenever you relate anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala time is cancelled and place is cancelled and this is just to tell you about how absolute is haqiqa and how limited is sharia. In sharia, you are obliged to pray, and sometimes you are prohibited to pray. Okay? And, uh, uh, you, you should have zakah, pay zakah, uh, once a year, and you name it. Whereas in haqiqa, those time and place wise, they are going to be gone completely because this is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فالشريعة حدود وجهات والحقيقة لا حد ولا جهة يعني الشريعة it's definite it's limited and it has some direction where in الشريعة حقيقة there is no definition and no uh, direction why because it is related to Allah سبحانه وتعالى القائم بالشريعة فقط تفضل عليه بمجاهدة دوانه is a good practitioner in Sharia only. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave favor on him to be mujahada. Mujahada, that means he works against himself. This is the meaning of mujahada here, to work hard against himself. والقائم بالحقيقة تفضل عليه بالمنة. And the one who always, you know, get himself involved in haqiqa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had his favor on him, on minna. Yani what he said, yani usually the sharia, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't lie at all, sharia, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whenever you do this, you are going to be granted this or that, okay? This is going to be matched according to your work. And that's why you should be hard worker to gain this. Whereas haqiqa, they are, some stations, some feeling, some love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which will, will, will be granted originally or initially from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without significant reason. What we have, the major one you know as such, the prophethood, and they said the prophethood is wahab, they said kasib. Don't relate the prophethood to that this person deserve it because of this or that. It's merely gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So here he said, when we speak about Sharia, as if you have a lot of concentration on Iyaka Na'budu, the first item, which means that you should be hard worker. When you look at Haqiqa, which is merely hiba min Allah subhanahu wa gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if you are look at wa iya kanastai. Okay? That's why it's too silly, you know, to ask why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives so and so this, you know, or that. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same thing, but don't 
ask about the other. Don't say why. You see this point here? You may ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same thing. Okay, Allah. And this is mentioned in the Sunnah of Nabi Mutahara. Allah maj'al ibn mislaha. Allah ma la taj'al ibn mislahu. Allah maj'al la taj'al ibn mislaha. Allah maj'al ibn mislahu. And this is a baby, you know, newborn, speaking, you know, Allah, I want to be like this one. And this is one of the good way, you know, of being like when you start hearing about him. And nowadays, or now, perhaps many of you, this is the first time to experience this talk, you know, and this knowledge, you know. But for sure, all of you, now you have in your heart something to make you closer to this matter, far from the other matter. Love this, don't love the other. Uh, understand this, don't understand the other, you see? And this is, really this is, I look at it as the starting point, you know, to seek, to find your portion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Where is your portion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Besides, when, when we speak all the time, you know, about our portion of the Prophet sallallahu here you look at, at your portion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said, you know, at the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in no need for any of our matters, you know, or relation or whatever. But we are poor, we are in the real need of them, you know. Uh, you should look uh, at the, as I said, you know, before prayer, the most perfect one among us, the one who look at his portion from Sharia and his portion from Haqiqah. And anyone who is poor in one of them is going to be, have imbalance. And whenever he has imbalance, this is make him not a perfect chair. We spoke this morning you know, about the perfect chair and told some, you know, to scream you know, overnight and try to shout, you know, to get the sheikh, you know, the real sheikh, the perfect chair. Well, who is the perfect chair? Who has his significant portion, perfect practice of sharia besides his significant and perfect practice in haqiqah, you know. And this Imam Ghazali and some others, you know, they said they are in our time, in their time, I mean, this is 900 years ago, it, uh, they are in our time much more red than the red sulfur. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unjust with anyone. The one who worked hard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward him, no doubt about it. I would rather say Allah subhanahu is too generous, you know. Uh, it's very generous because he may accept something that shouldn't be accepted. He may reward the one who that he should be, shouldn't be rewarded. And we have a lot of ahadith in this regard. And uh, that person who came just to say, that please, the one who has this car, you know, of plate number so and so, let him remove it. He, he entered the room when the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended and he was included in the forgiveness, you know, and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels say, oh Allah, this person doesn't belong here, you know. He just came to, for something. He said, even to him, you know, because these are the, I see, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too generous, may, it's very generous, may give it to the, so the one who, in our standard, doesn't deserve to be given so, okay? So here, we have this component of hard work, and we have the other component of the sharia, al-haqiqah, the reality. And here, in this particular point, you don't, you don't find any hard work. It's merely, it's only the fadl from Allah, the favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's significant difference between hard working and have this given to us by Allah. I'll give you an example about it, how Abbas subhanahu wa ta'ala give you this favor without even one single movement from you, whereas Sayyidina Salman Farsi, he had perhaps more than 100 years work hard in Luno and and uh, going from one place to another and face a lot of difficulties till he reached it. Namely, what I'm trying to speak about is your Islam, okay, your religion. All of you, you know, as I may know, you were born as Muslim. You know? And this is a gift given to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without anything. You haven't done anything for it. Don't kid me. 
Don't say, I know I'm good one. No, you are not good one. No, no. This was given to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Period, nothing there. Sayyidina Salman Farsi, he worked hard for more than 100 years, moved from one country to another, and from one city to another, and uh, suffered slavery and suffered bad uh, treatment and this and that until he reached his destination. The other one, Sayyidina Zayd ibn Abu Nufay, did not reach his destination. Alhamdulillah is successful, you know, and is going to be joined as one, as one nation in the hereafter. But what was he looking at? He did not get it. He was looking to follow the Prophet And he was killed before following the Prophet Okay? And here, don't be surprised when he said, Sharia is hard work and Haqiqa is merely fadl favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because all of you, you experience this, you know, your life. You have something given to you that you have never done anything you know, for it. So don't be, uh, be judges, you know, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, this cannot be happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to give. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the absolute. And you have nothing there, you know, to give your input, you know, or to say this is possible or this is impossible, okay? This is the merely initiated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the full right. As this example given to us, we have the other example mentioned for, to us, you know, the aqidah, prophethood. They said prophethood, there is no reason behind it, you know. No, nothing, no hard work to, <coughs> to be done to achieve prophethood. If you are the best hard worker ever, you know, in the whole history of humankind, we are not going to be prophet nowadays, you know. Now, and by this, you know, we look at it as murder, it's a favor from Allah. So here, the, the, the author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Sayyidina Shaykh Al-Islam, wants us to feel the difference between hard working and the favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Al-Qa'imu ma'al mujahadati mujood, wal-Qa'imu ma'al minnati mafkoon. Whoever is going to stick to his hard work is present. He is there. He is in charge. And this may contradict, contradict by one way or another with what we started our text with, okay? All those in charge and there and present doesn't fit what we, what the Prophet ﷺ told us about al-shirk al-khafi, al-shirk And this is as if you are declaring or giving a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you are working there, you know, not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designate those matters, I am hard work. <coughs> no, you are nothing. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ This not only by the will, even by the movement, you know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not sustain me to live, I don't have the ability to pray Maghrib, okay? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not Provide me with the strength, you know. Don't say about food or drink or all those matters that has nothing to do, okay? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not sustain me, provide me with the power, you know, to make ruku' and sujood, I'll not be able to do it. And this uh, give you, so that's why he said, the one who is his mujahada, hard worker, he's present there, he's in charge. The one who is the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absent, he's not there, okay? He doesn't even feel himself. He had this significant favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which occupy for him everything and he doesn't look for anything. Don't think that this is almost impossible. No, you, you read in the Holy Quran about Sayyidina Ibrahim. Sayyidina Ibrahim, many of those very curious uh, actions, you know, in his time, just to tell you that he, he did not use to care a lot, you know, about those asbab, those matters that we uh, give them the maximum care in our life, you know. He did not, he was not as such, you know. He used to be just uh, had his good relation with Allah, Khabirullah, he's a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know. He was thrown in the fire, no burning. He, wa he, he, he tried to slaughter his uh, son, you know, no cutting. He, he, he left his family, you know, in the desert, no less. Okay, why? Because all those matters is going to be 
uh, done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by the desert or by the knife or by the fire, you know. And since he has this strong, you know, relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's why sometimes they give the example of it, you know, like a baby, you know, when you have a baby, the baby don't, don't care about anything. If the mother at work, or she is busy, or she is tired, he cared about what is going to be given to him. Even he doesn't recognize who, by whom this was given, you know. He may feel his mother, you know, sometimes, you know, but he doesn't have this full recognition as if he is absent of everything and everything surrounding him supply him with all these matters. You know? And this is the example of those people, you know, of Ahl al-Minna, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make his favor, you know, significant and manifested, you know, in them, you know. Whereas the other, like the hard worker, you know, they will tell him, listen, if you don't work well, you know, we are going to fire you, okay? We are not here, you know, to be looked at and to be happy with you. You should be hard worker, you know, uh, no, no more mistakes, you know, otherwise we are going to fire you. This is the difference between the two, these two. Al-A'malu muta'alliqatun bil shari' al-shari' wa al-tawakkulu muta'aqliqun bil iman والتوحيد متعلق بالكشف الصحيح. Again, he gave us this in by three steps. The first step, your work, your deeds. This is related to الشرع الشريف. This is the another another level road of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We call it الشرع الشريف because he doesn't want anyone to think that he put down those matters. You know that this cannot be put down by by anyone. After the, this instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, I'malu, maash, I'malu, wa qul i'malu. Okay, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa qul i'malu, work, no one has the right to say, I'm with Allah, I'm not going to work, this is all initiated by Allah, I'm going to sit and try to, no. Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed you to do, according to the standard of al-shar al-sharif, you should work. And this is what, the Prophet ﷺ was asked about it thoroughly. They asked the Prophet ﷺ, those deeds that we do, they are they pre designated before you know or not? He said, all of them they were pre designated. They said, so what's the point of working it then? You shouldn't work. He said, I'malu fa kullum yassaru You should work. This is the message given to you by Allah. Allah who designated all of these matters, He is the one who told you to work. Okay? And you have no excuse to say, no, I'm not going to work. So here, He connected all of those deeds, actions, to al-shara, and He described it as al-sharif, just, just to tell us how honorable is our sharia, and we shouldn't bypass or ignore this point, or put down those who are good practitioners in it. Then, spoke, speaking about tawakkul, here you feel yourself, but we try to relate yourself all the time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, this is the second step, you know, here uh, you are better than the first one who is stuck with his work, you know. Now, you have reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are much, much more oriented to the meaning of وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Even though you feel yourself seeking this help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the second step which was described by him here as Iman. And you may match them with the Hadith of Sayyidina Jibreel. And then he spoke about Tawheed and what he means by Tawheed here. What? To look at all of those matters as from one point. What is this one point? The oneness of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only one in himself, is the one in his self, in his attributes, in his names, and in his actions. And that's why this Tawheed, he said, مُتَعَلِّقٌ بِالْكَشْفِ الصَّحِيحِ you see, kashif, what's the meaning of kashif? When you have, when you observe something which is impossible to be observed, you know, by microscope or telescope or anything, you know, of those 
magnify materials, you know, or tools, you are, you don't have the ability to see them. This you need the help of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You need the eye of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Kuntu bih wa basaruhu I am His sight. I am His hearing." Okay, by this you may have the ability to see the unseen, to have the ability to hear the unheard, and uh, as we know scientifically, <coughs> you know, we know that the bees, the dogs, they have some extra uh, specialty that the human, you know, in spelling, you know, that the, the dog is more uh, efficient you know, than the, the human. The bees, they may have some colors, you know, seen by them, which are not seen by us as a human. And uh, the voices, uh, again, you have other animals, you know, they are more efficient in that than us. And this just, not, uh, يعني, if this is the case with the animals, we are deficient, you know, in front of the animals. How is this? when we when we are in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? We need to keep. There's no comparison, you know. But when you try to look at it from this matter, for sure you are going to be able to see the unseen and look to uh, and hear the unheard and uh, feel the not felt. And this is what we uh, call it Alam al Malakut, the the uh, the world of the non physical matter, the non material matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted it in the Holy Quran and he said, Allah lahu al khalq wal amr. Al khalq, the physical one, the creation, belong to Allah. Alam al amr, this is the alam al malakut, again it, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as you, you may see, he put it in three steps the step of work. And this is related to Shara Sharif, the step of reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is the uh, uh, Iman, that's when you may call it Islam again, and this Iman, and the step of having Kashif, and this is Al Ihsan. Al Nasu Ta'ihuna Ali Al Haqqi Bil which may not make that sense, you know, to some of us, you know, if we believe that intellect is. is, is very important thing to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said sometimes this intellect is going to take away, take you away of the truth. Why? Because in this intellect that we use, you cannot understand anything if you don't have something similar in your mind. Okay? And here I'm going to match whatever I see, whatever I hear, whatever I feel. Or, or anything, you know, to whatever in my mind. If you ask a person, you know, from 200 years ago, about this one here, the computer, I'll tell you there's a glass here, you know, and some buttons, you know, and he will not understand if you said computer. Why? Because he doesn't have in his mind something similar to it, to speak about it. Here, when you say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, laysa kamislihi shayin. That means your intellect is, is going to be completely paralyzed of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because you cannot match it, you know, with anything in your mind. And that's why he said here that the intellect is going to uh, make you lost, you know, of the truth. Okay? That's why some of the scholars, they said, the best way or they said perhaps the only way, because this is their experience of it, the only way to get knowledge is through, to have it through the kashif from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other ways, all of them, they are not good in working with. Because you may understand some thing, you may not understand other things, you know, you may forget this, you know, you may uh, have some imagination about the others, you know. This is, I may relate it as, Sayyidina Ibn Atta Allah said, يُنفِقْ ذُو سَعَةٍ مِنْ سَعَةٍ وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُ فَلْيُنفِقْ ذُو مَا أَتَى Allah. The one who has that, that quality, he shouldn't look to those lower qualities, you know, his intellect or whatever, when he has this quality of wing, having the hearing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sight from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hand from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the feet foot from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who is poor in it, you know, and limited to uh, his intellect, and uh, he may work, you know, according to them, till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permit if he's going to be, to have the other one. 
وَتَائِهُونَ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ بِالْهَوَى As I said in the first session, all, even the non-believers, they believe in this. They may not believe in the hereafter, but for sure they, they believe in this. And here, when you put it in the hereafter, this is, I think even the believers, the non-Muslim believers, they should believe in the hereafter. Nowadays, <laughs> you may hear that some of them, they don't believe in the hereafter, but they should believe in the hereafter. Yet, what, what factor is going to drive them away of practice for the hereafter is al Dabash. This, the major God, Worship beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mentioned in the Quran. Atharaita manitahada ilaha hu hawa. They worship their passion, their hawa, and consider it as a <coughs> That's why they are deviated, taken away of the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? When you, whenever you are you seek to reach the truth, you know. Or sometimes they may mean by haq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by your intellect you are going to be misguided. Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by Him. akhirata bil hawa faqad dalalt. Whenever you try to adjust your belief about hereafter, you know, according to your passion, you are going to be misguided again. Then he gave this explanation you know of the difference between the step the second step we call it iman and the third step we call it ihsan he said al mu'minu those who are in the second step they are going to look at everything by the light of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereas those who are in the third step al arifu we call him by the you see as you may see it has been given different you know to that this third step ihsan kashif uh, uh, and you know, you know it many other arifi well arif yonzuru bihi ilayhi is going to look by Allah to Allah okay and he's li li limited in the beginning and in the end of it yonzuru bihi don't be surprised because you already know the hadith the authentic hadith kuntu sam'ahu alladhi yasma'u bihi وَبَصَرُهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ يعني the author here used the same wording mentioned in that hadith بِهِ by Allah but here is very important point some of these people they, who reach, reach this quality they are going to go back what do I mean they are going to go back now he has a skill, you know, of looking inside you. He may look how many pounds you have in your pocket, or what come to your mind, or what come to your heart, just to show that he is worthy. And this is what has been termed by some as Kashif Ardi. Kashif Ardi, that means he used this Kashif from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this uh, light given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to inspect in more sophisticated way the matter that are inspected by the other. I would like to know how many pounds in your pocket, you know, and what did you eat today and what coming to, you see. But I, I have very limited, you know, power here to, uh, uh, to, to look for, uh, to inspect this matter. That one is more sophisticated and he is going to use, or you may say to abuse this honorable, gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to abuse it, you know, and inspecting very silly matters, you know, of the others. Whereas the most guided one among them who use this to make him more knowledgeable in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, when you have this unique or this sophisticated tool, you know, of looking, hearing, uh, and you name it, this doesn't mean that you are 
protect it? No. You may abuse it, you know, by using it for silly matters. And we should remember all what has been mentioned in the Holy Quran. What you are in the Aladi Atina, Ayatina, Fansala, Hamina, Atwa, Shaitan, Fakan, and Rawi. This person, according to the commentator, he was given the Ism al Azam. What does it mean, the Ism al Azam? That whatever he asks, Allah subhanahu is going to happen. Yet, this did not help him. Why? Because he used, he, or he abused, you know, al ism al azam for silly matters, you know. He wants to show himself, you know, among the other. He wants to, if he used this ism al azam to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be one, one of the best person, you know, ever, you know, in, in this. And this is, yani here, uh, those qualities given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, and this tells us how we should have our heart, you know, occupied with what? What we are interested in. The one who is interested, you know, in something except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to direct all of these matters, you know, to help him to attain whatever he is interested in. Whereas the one who is given this, you know, and his uh, concern and his love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to direct them to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much better. And don't be surprised, even the people of heaven, they are of these different levels, you know. Some in the heaven, they are interested, you know, in riding horses. The other, they are interested in agriculture. The third, they are interested in this, in eating or in drinking or in uh, going to a palace or to have relations with a woman. Or, you see, yeah, you have all those different matters that you look at them in this life, they are, you are going to find them in the hereafter. That's why... I tell myself, even though I was really bad, you know, I'm not that, uh, not good at all, you know, this, you know, whatever you train yourself you, to mm -hmm. do in this life, you are going to be busy in the hereafter. This is the, this is the common trend. I cannot say th this is what should Allah subhanahu wa do, do. I don't have the authority to speak as such, but what we learn from the surrounding, that this is the <coughs> common trend. Whatever you are busy with in this life, we are going to be with, busy with in the hereafter. So it's uh, for sure entering the heaven. The heaven is very, very important and very great matter. We don't put it down. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Azim, Ajrun, Azim, we cannot put it down, you know. We don't have the authority. We should uh, uh, get the honor by praising it, by admiring it. But when you compare it to the different levels that you have there, you should be wise, you know, to look at the top of it, you know, namely to go by to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why he said the, the Al-Arif is going to be given the sight from Allah, by Allah, see by Allah, to Allah. See by Allah, to Allah. Okay? And he's given all those skills, you know, from Allah, all those strengths from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they... Uh, Mainly, he's going to use them to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, doesn't mean that they will never be used, you know, otherwise, because sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him to look at the heart of this person and give him ad an advice. Listen, my friend, I have seen your heart, you know, which is uh, gray, not that clean, you know. Be careful about this, okay? Well, listen, my friend, you have this bad, this is a very bad intention, don't do it. Okay, and listen, my friend, you are, you see, they may be given this, you know, and it is not necessary to be the, the case all the time, okay, but this is, in most of these cases, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make these people, you know, to help the other, to advise the other, to, to search for the deficiencies, you know, in the others, you know, and that's why we call Shaykh al kamil and that's why we call to give bay'ah or whatever, that just, to have good treatment, you know. And, and I'm sorry to tell you, you know, I attended an Haram al Madani, you know. I was sitting with a person, you know, who, who I think of, of this level, you know, and he was speaking with another person. Alhamdulillah, not with me, you know, I'm not that good, that good. He was speaking with someone else, you know, and that person showed a lot of respect to this person, you know, and he is well educated, you know. And when that, uh, the wali keep insisting on the, do this or that, you know, listen, I, I know much more than the, about this matter than you. And, <laughs> and he went, you know, 
out of his respect, you know, and start to show his specialties, you know. Here, this person, you know, he may be the best, you know, but he's not going to get any benefit of this person. Because he put all the expectation down. See? And it was really, I was surprised, you know, I was shocked because it was within a few minutes, you know. He showed a lot of respect. <laughs> and when that person keeps insisting on him, and, and one issue, he said, Listen, I know much, much more better than you, you know, and you are well, you are Baraka, but you don't know those matters. I know them much better than you. So, what I'm trying to say, firstly, those tools, if they are given to any of you, please, okay, help us, okay? Or, no, no, what I want to say, please upgrade your look. And let them, you know, serve you to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much more. Because that's what needed of you from this life, you know, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So use all of these tools, you know, to, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much better. Then, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you that permission, you know, to advise this person or to speak with that person, help us please, you know, with this matter. ما دمت أنت معك أمرناك فإذا فنيت عنك توليناك وما توليهم إلا بعد فناء. يعني هير we say ولي I don't like this translation you know you know English much better than me you know I don't like this translation we say friends of Allah سبحانه وتعالى I think the ولي should have differently than only friend you know of Allah سبحانه Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that because Allah is the one who believes and the one who believes and the one who believes. Here we should look at it, you know, from, from all levels and in different aspects. That's why Imam Tahaw in his aqidah said, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلُّهُمْ أَوْلِيَا اللَّهِ We are all loyal to Allah. We are all friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in different standards, different levels, and in different scopes. Okay? So one of these scopes, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you left with yourself, you know, by your own, you are going to receive the commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because now you are with yourself, you are slave. Okay, and the slave, the best thing you know in him to receive commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support you with his supporting tools, you know, that you could to sama Allah the Asma'awi wa Sallam the Yasarabi, and you got yourself involved completely in them to the extent of fana, what's the meaning of fana? That you are not aware of yourself. You don't know anything about yourself, as happened to those women, you know, who start cutting their fingers, you know, when they observe Sayyidina Yusuf. Okay? So here, this is fana, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you in this position, is going to give you the real wilaya. He is going to be the guardian of you. He is going to be the one who is in charge for you. He is going to be the one who gives that decision in particular for you. Some may say that Allah gives decision for everyone. Yes, but give it for everyone in a type of commanding and giving for this his decision as a one beloved to Allah subhanahu wa One, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concern a lot of it. For sure, all of us, we have some portion of it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah mawla ladina amanu. But you may imagine how, how there's a the significant difference, you know, between us and how we are given this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا تَوَلَّهُمْ إِلَّا بَعْدَ The real one here, the one who was given this rank from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he became completely vanished of himself. Of himself. Fana, complete fana of himself. And here, uh, what, what I understand it, I don't have a test here, you know, but I understand it, he will not defend himself if he was condemned by anyone. He's not going to uh, prove his point. He's not going to get angry for himself. And this is, we take it from the Sunnah, the Bawai Mutahara. 
the Prophet ما غضب لنفسه قط. In many occasions, he will be approached harshly or speak with him severely, and he never get angry at all, as described by Sayyidina Aisha, for himself. He's going to get angry when there's something happening, you know, against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or misbehavior toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is going to be real angry. For himself, never, as Sayyidina Aisha. Why I should say Sayyidina Aisha? Because this is a person who used to live with him all the time. She, she knows about him inside the house, outside the house. And all of us, you know, we experience a lot, you know, inside and outside. And we, frequently we get angry, you know. And here the prophets never get angry for himself. We get angry only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this you may, يعني, we are not here to speak about prophets, you know. But you may understand when he said here that the wilayah will be given after complete fana. The complete fana, that's me, they are not aware of themselves, you know, at all. ما دمت أنت فأنت مريد فإن أفناك عنك فأنت مراد. Okay, the one not like me or like those people like me, you know, those who are really hard worker, they are called مريد. Whenever your identity is still available, you are مريد. Okay. Why I said hard worker? Because like Sayyidina Muslim al-Khawlani, who used to spend the whole night praying, and whenever he feels tired, you know, he's going to beat up his feet, you know, and say, if the companion of the Prophet thought that they are going to take him away and leave us, you know, they have bad thoughts, you know, not let them do so. But, but he's hard worker. He's work here then, you know, to attain his portion from the Prophet Sayyidina Aswan Affan, out of his love of the Quran, he stood and spent the whole night, perhaps not the whole night, he spent in one rak'ah beside the Quran completely from the beginning till the end. He was above 80 years. Okay? And you name it. This is, I'm not saying they are murid, no. This is the real work. This is the hard worker, okay? <laughs> they mentioned, Imam Nawal mentioned in, in Tibiyam about a person who used to have uh, three khatim per night. And three other active, you know, actions, you know, that you like per night, okay? And this real man, you know, toward his family and toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hard worker. Okay, this is the work that should be done. And this mentioned by Imam al nawawi okay? فَإِذَا أَفْنَاكَ عَنْكَ فَأَنْتَ مُرَادٍ When you are completely out of charge, then you are wanted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have murid and murad. Murid the one who has a will to achieve this destination. And this is, has been mentioned in the holy hadith, hadith al-Qudsi in Bukhari, My slave, keep trying to get closer to me by the nafila. Don't imagine the nafila only the prayer. Nafila, you have it in prayer, in fasting, in zakah, and recite the Quran, or in uh, uh, paying charity, and making zikr, and you name it. Many, many, many other things, you know. I don't want to even limit them to the one I counted. Here, nawafi means the group of them. All, all the, these we have, we have been encouraged, you know, to, to do all the, all the time, till he reached the point of being beloved by Allah subhanahu And this is the turn point. He used to be murid before, wants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After this point, which mentioned this hadith, is going to be wanted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentioned here murid and murad. Some other Sufi book may, may mention Salik and Majzub. Salik, the one who work hard, hard worker, you know, to reach that point that we are speaking about. Okay. And the Majdu, the one who has been taken away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they mentioned four different types, you know, this is just to make it more clear. They said majority of those, these people, they are going to be hard worker and reach that point 
and then they are going to be mezub. Not we don't mean by mezub here to be crazy or mad. No, mezub that means his heart has been taken away to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Even though he may be one of the best practitioners, but nowadays when he pray, when he uh, has any of these duties, you know, or the nafila, he's not going to be as before. He's taken away with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's completely with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't know anything about the surrounding. You have the other possibility, which is rare and just few go by it. He will be initiated as murad or majzub, and then he will be told, go back and work. Okay. His heart will be taken away, Majzoo, and then he will be told, go back. And I, the way I look at it, the first item similar when you go first grade, second grade, then you go college, then university, then PhD, and whatever. The other one is given PhD, and then they will tell him, go to the first grade now. Okay. And the, second, the third type of them is called Salik Abadan. Hard worker all the time, he did not reach this point. Why? Don't ask me why. Okay? And we have the fourth one, who is Majdubun Abadan. He doesn't care, he doesn't know, okay? He, his heart was taken, you know, and he doesn't know how to go back, you know, and read and study on, or read, do this or that. So these are the four types of those people who are interested in Allah. I don't feel that we should divide ourselves, you know, according to this. Perhaps, I don't know about you, I know about myself, you know, I don't fit one of, one of these four, you know. I'm not there, okay? And I expect, you know, since nowadays, many people, they run away from Tasawwuf. Many persons, they are not there, you know, at all. You may have some of these types. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and amilahana min fadlihi. اليقين الأدوان في غيبتك عنك ووجودك به. The certainty may last, may not last. Okay. I heard this from a famous speaker who used to speak in the TV. You know, he said I was swimming, you know, in the sea in Beirut. And I was about to be, be drowned. And as if we say, you know, as if he faced and tasted the, the death. And then he was survived, you know, by someone, you know, who t t took him, you know. He said, himself, he said, that my prayer changed completely for one month. Then I returned back to the ordinary world. This experience of facing death, not facing Allah, facing death, make the the quality of his prayer go up significantly, but did not last for him. Okay. That's why he said here, al-yaqeen al-adwa, the one who has certainty,